Oh yeah, yeah. Woo, woo. Where this guy, this guy? Now two bottles, I'm on now. Call me UJ. Rock, yeah, 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 yeah. Young girl, free clothes, yeah. Now you want to get? Made in Ghana. Well, Ghana's rap doctor is in the studio. In the academia. When, when you no, go to, no, no, when no, you go no. to school, were you getting good passes? Not at all. When, when I when I finished form five, I got nine in everything except account. <laughs> I got nine in everything, but I had one in G. Why? I know. I I you know growing up I was dyslexic. You know, so I was one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I was one of those those children that at ten I used to say a mu and me okay uh -huh. you know so one of those and then, and then they instead of diagnosing me properly or taking me to a professional they used to beat me they used to hit my head you know with Kim where Jimmy where Jimmy I had that consistently for like ten years whoa and then you know um, sometimes my my mother who was also a teacher who she had a friend that. Um, was teaching me at class too. So this friend, her name was uh, Mrs. Buama. So my mother would beat me at home, and then when I go to school, Mrs. Buama would also beat me. And what broke my spirit was that I couldn't come home to tell my father because he was in on it. <laughs> you know, like I was beating. I'm um, even tearing. I was beating everywhere for not knowing how to read and count, and it wasn't my fault. You know, so I went to school. I didn't know why I was going to school. I didn't care about what they were teaching me. All that I was interested in was the poetry and how to get the knowledge of poetry, language, culture, tradition. Those were the things that I, I didn't care about mathematics, accounting, nothing. So I got my nine in everything. English, math, English, math. See, I could have passed English, but during the essay, there was Kukro Bite in it and I've never come to Accra before. So I read it as Kukro <laughs> After after I completed form five, then this is in '92 or '93. Then I wanted to take the rap seriously, so I went to Lord Marcus and I asked Lord Marcus to teach me how Great to rap. Man. Yes, so he said I should bring my 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 results. He saw my results. Like, say, yeah. What bone say no? Person who can rap. Rap is for intelligent people. Mm. You know, go and ch check out Rakim. Check out uh, KRS One. Yes. Check out exactly. So when we look at check out Nas. So when he played rap songs and he, he made me write them down and I realized that these were philosophies. Mm. I mean, these were modern day Shakespeare's. Right. So he said, if I'm going to teach you how to rap, then you need to read. So every day you give me a book and then teach me one concept in literature, maybe metaphor or simile. Mm. So go and underline all the similes in this book and come wow, wow, wow. in four days. You know, but I remember he used to say, I said, what about that promise next month? And okay. so for, when the four days, uh, uh, was up and I didn't bring the books. He said, "Better tell, better tell." So sorry, you know. So uh, for at least for between four days and a week, I will underline all the concepts. So in one year, were you getting some wrong little? No, no. I love literature. So he, this guy did what my parents couldn't do. He right. found my interest and used it to bring along all the other things I was afraid to. So when I wrote my second world war, I had one, 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 one. Really? Yes, except math that I got like three. Who was Lord Marcus? So we lived in Fantino Town uh, in Kumasi. So Lord Marcus was the was the son of the preacher at the AMA Isaiah. Right. So he was exposed. He had um, he came to secondary school at Cape Coast. And then he had exposed friends, parents used to travel. He was the coolest guy in Pantinita. He played basketball. He knew how to woo girls. He was the, the guy to talk. I wasn't the only one that he influenced that. He influenced Lord Kenya. Almost every young guy who wanted to become a rapper at that time in Kumasi. Lord Marcus had some influence on that. Achana well, Kwame, always a storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> always, always a storyteller. But but you, when, when you came from America, all you wanted was Ghanaians will accept you as the best rapper. Yes. But where where did that interest come from? I just realized that okay, the songwriter was too vague. The specific thing that before people will realize that I'm a good songwriter, they must see I'm a I'm a good rapper. Because I was a rapper first. When you said a jammy one, people said rap doctor. Right. You know, so people first looked at me as a rapper before they looked at me as a songwriter. So I realized that okay, the songwriter thing is difficult because I need to contend with work so much. Um, Amachi de de, Amanze back again. Daddy Lumba, great song. Yes, Daddy Lumba. You know, um, um, Papa Yangsen, A B Crenzo, A B Crenzo. You know, at that time they were they were still trending. You know, so I need to contest with people like the Benji. 
So I said, okay, you know what? This is a difficult thing to achieve. Let me first attack book back and read your own story. You know, let me first deal with my space. And after I've dealt with my space, then I can go and contend with these other legends. Okay, but was it paying off? Because it looks like at the time you were struggling. Yes, I was struggling. I remember that, um, you know, I came back from America in 2003. And then between 2003 and 2009, I became artist of the year. I've done 219 features. So I used to call I used to call Amanda by say, Uncle, are you recording an album? I want to come and put my raps up. But that what you were doing? Yes, I called. You were rather lobbying for I called Daddy Luma, I called like Luma. I called everybody. I used to call Samini, Samini. Because I realized that when I returned from the US, nobody knew a Jamie. And remember that you took me in 203 to an Nkase lunch that you were playing uh, at the beach. Really? I yes. <laughs> and then when you I mean you actually had to beg them to put me back on stage. Mm -hmm. And when they put me on stage, people were booing me. So oh. when you started playing for me, the people like, uh, away, away. And then I did my rap, tap, 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 tap. and then they say, yeah. And then I got it <laughs> quietly. Okay. That was the day of reckoning for me. That was the day I realized that, hey, so this Achiame thing has ended. I need to build my own steam. So, how was Social that? Social media wasn't alive at the time. I know. Doing kind of your, 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 your brand. Exactly. So, how was I going to do it? I was going to. Hold on to the people who had established themselves whilst I was away okay. and try to bounce back. You know, so that's what I did. And then I also took something from Samini. I realized that Samini was fishing on everybody's song. Mm -hmm. So once he's on the song, then the fans of him, his fans and the fans of the other artists will come together to love him. You know, so I got inspired. Samini inspired me. And then I featured on everybody's song. And that was the thing that gave me the impetus. <laughs> I'm trying to recall too many features. I remember, I mean, back, back then, Charlie, your features were too many. They, they used to call me sugar. You remember, who if I put my sugar in your cocoa, they tell me to say, hey, please, 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 please. But you, you were not charging for those who were rather inviting you to um, to feature. No, 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 no. When I started, I was, I remember, clearly, when I started, I was the one, you know, calling people. So when it was my time to also feature for people, I didn't charge anything. I didn't no. come and do, yes, nothing. If you, if you call that, you know, I will tell you. Yes, I didn't charge anything. I would rather, I was happy to do it because I knew that this was Chiamme Kwam that I have become. I knew that it was, you know, sometimes when you see the, a baby of a, of a lion, it looks like a house cat. So you think it's a house cat, but it knows it's a lion. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like, yo, you're the greatest rapper? Or you feel like, well, uh, hey, I, most I, times. Honestly, I used to feel like I was the greatest rapper for many, many, many years. And then, sack for the ear, floating stone, <laughs> and, and Gemini, and, and medical, and Joy B, and all these young people just emerged. And I'm like, wow, for a while, like, I think uh, between 2016 and 2017, I turned off my phone only to pay attention to the music industry. Mm. Yes, I turned off my phone for one whole year so that I could cleanse myself of everything that I think I know and taking the new knowledge that is coming. And it was after I did that that then I recorded the Made in Ghana album and everything else that is to follow. You switched off your phone for one whole year. So how were you communicating with people? Oh, you know, people who know how to find me. My, my mom and they, they will call up work and say, or call my wife. You know, if you wanted to find me, my phone was off, you wouldn't even know because you quickly call my wife. Mm -hmm. So people who needed to find me, found me, but I was off totally. So that when I turned 40, I turned off my phone for one whole year. One whole year. I didn't go anywhere. I was at home the whole year. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't speak to anyone except you. <laughs> and then I, I, I turned off my phone. I didn't think of music. I guess I just wanted to cleanse my mind. I just wanted a certain hygiene for everything I, was, I had done so I could start my life again. So but when you listen to them, do you shiver? Do you oh, feel like no, 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 no? I don't. I just appreciate it. when I listen to someone like Sakura. Like I was telling my son that when you say Sakura, we are doing this thing. Let us all do hundred. You will do a thousand. <laughs> you know, I'm like, wow, this young man has energy because he, he's like a never like those energy 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 batteries. He can, he never stops. You know, so he's just inspiring. It's just inspiring to see like my brother floating stone. Every day he's in the studio. When he's there, he has a studio in his washroom, a studio in his bathroom, a studio everywhere, a studio in his car. Every time he's recording, I'm like, how do you do it? The energy is too hard. Exactly, eh? you know, so that is something that I envy. I envy you. I envy only two things. 
a person that is smarter than I am and a person who has a, a much younger age. These are the only two things I am. I want to be young. I want to grow young. <laughs> I want to grow young. I did a song. Is it growing old? Is a scam? Yes, I'm telling you. I don't. I want. I don't want to grow because if I grow old, I don't want to grow. <laughs> Speaking of that, you mentioned. Okay, now before you even go there, um, you you were talking about um, you know, rap. Yes. And Sakodi's energy. Now, Floating Stone, your brother featured yes. Sakodi on the song. When, when, when you heard it, yes. What was your reaction? I like. You know, I heard the song before everyone. So before a month before, he sent me the the, the recording. You know, I had no, I, I went to, um, you know, I heard a song, he sent it to me, and I'm like, wow, this is beautiful artistry. The thing that shocked me was when the song came out, it became rather a banter on social media. Mm -hmm. There's somebody yeah. fans against blocking stuff, and that's what I didn't understand. I didn't see how people couldn't find the unity in their diversity. The fact that they had come together to record a song together. I, I thought that that was going to inspire Ghanaian youth to come together to achieve more together. I thought it was going to inspire collaboration, but no, it inspired competition. You know, so I was quite shocked that that was the outcome. But the song was beautiful. Especially the chorus <laughs> killed me. His voice, I man. It was a beautiful song. It was, I just wished I could be on that song. Oh, really? I wanted to be on that song. But the song was apart, apart from you, um, you you did a feature with Sakodie, um I think it was a collaborative effort for KKD. KKD, KKD yes. But why haven't you recorded with him yet? We've been speaking about recording for 10 years now, but I know God's finding the best. First, we spoke about doing singles, and then we sat down and we spoke about recording an album together so that we could go on a tour together, you know, like the best of both worlds. And then the idea became so big, then it became difficult to manifest. Okay. If a single would have been easy. But I think that I should just uh, repeat the conversation and then, and then see where it is. I can't wait. I can, if there's one thing that I'm, I must do before I quit rapping, it can be a feature mm. So b before um, I touched on the floating sack, sack feature, um, something came up about you speaking about death. Yes, and, I like death. And, and you like death? It's an amazing natural phenomenon. So what, what are you still doing on earth? <laughs> you know, I'm not old enough or I'm not hurt enough for the life to leak out of my body. So I, thought, I lose my body. But I, I think that our society really will shy away from speaking about the most important things like sex. We don't speak about money. We do not talk about conflict. We don't talk about death. These are amazing phenomena that we need to look at. And because of that, we always go back to what our forefathers said about these things 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 1,000 years ago. And even though it, is, it might not be applicable in modern times, we still hold on to it because we are too scared. Your to children them. are growing. Yes. Do you speak to them about sex? Every day. Sex? Every single day. So when my children used to go to school, I didn't, they are no longer in school. No, they are doing homeschool. When they used to go to school, they, it was a 30 minutes drive from my house to the school. And on that drive, every day we speak about sex from the beginning of the life till they get to school. Six. They ask all sorts of questions. Yeah, what well, the, the, the oldest is what, 11 years? 11, 11. the youngest is nine. Of course, would you rather want their friends to tell them about sex? Or you want to tell them and tell them the truth? Because the idea is to be able to empower children with knowledge they didn't have when we were their age. Mm -hmm. So that they would not make the mistakes we make. You know, so we talk about everything. We talk about the other time you were asking me who's on top. My son is trying to find out are human beings the only animals who have sex for procreation and recreation? Do dogs enjoy sex? Why? But I'm not raising them. It's not livestock. I am guiding them. Okay. I'm nurturing them to be the best of themselves. <laughs> okay, some few questions and then I'll read some of the tweets. Sadiq. Sadiq says, the ever deep full of Chiamiqua. Oh. When he spent time with us at the three MAs board this year, it was clear. But Chiami needed to pursue the PhD. Oh. His deep <laughs> insights and experience provided a lot of direction to us this year. Really looking to the day, I will address him as Dr. Kwame Siapo, all round hard guy. Oh. Love him to mates, no homo. Oh. <laughs> Sadiq, 
come to work and stop the <laughs> long writing. Original slices. Who said staying out of bad controversy can't get you there? Most people don't have patience now. They want everything fast, fast. Doing the right thing is slow and difficult, but it's worth it if you push through. Big up, such a you set a good example. There was one song you did that I doubted if you're really a human being. Really, which one? This song right here. Hello. This song right here with I Won and Richie. The rap went backwards. Backwards. Oh uh, man, I can see. Uh, I can see. Should have called me here, yeah, man. No. Oh. Uh, Charlie, this song, man. <laughs> Let's listen to this song. When we come back, Ria will join us in the studio with her questions and then we'll listen to Yaku. <laughs> We're writing it. Yes, sir. I decided, I said, I've done a lot of things. Can I write a story from backwards? Where a person who is this who is planning to go and kill somebody will change his mind at the filling station. So the petrol comes out of his tank, goes back into the, the station. The, the nozzle goes back and then, into it. Yes, and then he his he, you know the whole story is told from backwards. When he has actually gone to kill the person, when he's going to shoot the person, and then now he decides that he gets the bullet back from the person's you know belly into the the pistol, his hand moves away from, from the, the trigger from the trigger gun goes back into the holster he reverses into the car his feet leaves the brake and then goes back onto the accelerator and then he drives to the filling station where he decided to go and kill his wife Ria! Yes, uh-huh. Good morning. Good morning. Mm-hmm. Okay, so all I would like to say is that I think you don't have a bad song, honestly. Oh. You do not have a bad song. Like, you're one of the greats when it comes to it's hip life. So I mean, it's true. <laughs> and I would also want to say, I, I, I like the way you're familiar with it. And you know, you have a tight knit family from your relationship. From, from what I heard, your relationship with your parents, your relationship with your brothers and your kids and your wife, I think. It is something worthy of emulation. Thank you. But um But I want... oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> no, 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 no. Shoot no. freely. No, 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 no. I I I, I want to in you. Yeah. I wanted word, to ask course. a question. Please talk to me. Um I think I, I watched an interview, one of your interviews, I think with Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. And um you told him about how as a little boy you meant fatherhood from your father by him putting you in one of his taxis, taxis in, the evenings. in the evening and roaming around Kumasi and all that and that's what taught you to be a good father and to love your children and um, I wanted to know what would be you know it's not every artist or budding artist or who uh, an artist was made that has that kind of you know rapport with their kids or rapport with their family like you do and um, they are, some are even unfortunate to not have their wife around or to not to have their baby mama and kids around. I think what would be the ultimate big brotherly, fatherly advice you can give you know, such artists? Well, I say that not just as for every young you know, a father is not a sperm baby. So when you made a woman pregnant, you both bring forth a child. It is your responsibility to take care of the child together. I mean, the best and the easiest way is when you are both in a, in a relationship or when you are both at the same place. But even if you are not at the same place, you need to try your best. That's when you must double the effort to make sure that you have your life will touch the life of this young one that you have brought. Because your child is your child. It is your responsibility to take care of your child. I mean, it's not always money. Sometimes it's touch. Sometimes it's an advice. Sometimes it's just because the child has come to you. It feels good. When a child has a great relationship with his father, he is confident because if someone is trying to hurt him, he knows that his protector, which is his father, will come and come back. You know, so it doesn't matter if you have money or not, whether the girl lives in London or you are in Ghana. Make sure that once you are responsible for bringing that child, you need to make sure that 
the, the, the consequence of your life is on the child. Okay, so speaking about children, I just heard you tell Andy that you are homeschooling your kids. Yes. yes. I wanted to know what informed that decision because you're not very smart kids. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to know what informed that decision. Is it that you don't really like the educational system in Ghana? And no, you know, yeah. I've always, before um, Annie and I got married, we used to say we homeschool our children. Okay. Because we had spoken about it, Annie will work in corporate for a while and stop and then come and be a stay-home mom, not a housewife, a stay-home mom who is taking care of the children and doing some petty trading on the side. You know, so we always, but we were just afraid to try it. But when the COVID came and there was lockdown and we had to teach our children every day, and even with this school system of online schooling, you must be there to make sure that the children don't turn the screen off and veer into YouTube something. You know, the COVID told us, that ah, this homeschooling thing will work. So in the middle of the COVID, we wrote to the school that we want to homeschool our children. And then to answer the question, do I have a problem with the education system? Not really. But I do not think that the whole idea of regurgitation of who is that, who did that, in which year did John Jai did, those things, you know, our mind works in two ways. It, is, it either works with our memory or with our imagination. So I think that our education system tries to improve our memory that's why you write you, you learn at the right time you write an exam based on the things you remember and the one that remembers most gets 100 100 and is rewarded the one doesn't remember gets nine, gets nine and it's and it's punished and and hooted that and laughed at you know but the whole idea of education is not just about memory it's also about imagination it's about creativity and our schools do not teach creativity I mean, when I remember when we were at cars, we used to laugh at our art teacher. But for a car to be able to be what it is, it is an engineer who is not just relying on the memory of engineering, but also has the creativity of imagination to decide to turn a horse and carriage into a machine and so that it takes people and So I think that our education can begin to look at creativity too. That's why I am a TVS and mother, because I honestly trust and I know that if we, we pay attention to the technical and vocational education in Ghana as well, it will work. So what I do is that I have a teacher that comes to the house from Monday to Friday, from Monday to Thursday, and on every Friday, whatever it is that we are doing, we go out there to see. So if you are learning engineering, I drive them to the Peter shop, they see. I'm talking about history, I drive them to the museum. If you are talking about the marketplace, we drive to the marketplace and then they see, they touch, they feel. You know, it's not just about here. It's about touching, feeling and trying. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you even go to the carpentry shop for them to try and, and do something because that is what we move Africa for. But by the end of those, you've seen it all done it all. We hear so many of these new artists and they don't have they don't have support. I mean we've discussed this on this show so many times. We don't have support, we don't enjoy a lot of airplay, we don't have unity. What do you think is the problem at this point? Because I mean you've seen it all and you, I think you've played quite a pivotal role on some of the boards yes. when it comes to the music industry. Yes. So for you, from your perspective. What exactly do you think the problem is? Is um, in this industry. I think I, I group it into two: professionalism and unity. So let me speak about unity first. So two rappers fight amongst themselves, and they go and pay three thousand CDs to record a song insulting the other. Then the song comes on radio, and it's a big, and it's trending on Twitter, and YouTube, and the media. And the other rapper also goes to music. What happens is that immediately, radio gets content. There's a great opportunity for you to gossip so that MTN pays how much they paid to advertise more for a second. <laughs> you know, and then the bloggers pick it, and then they also get clickbait, and Google AdSense pays them. And everybody in the chain is going to get something. But two weeks later, when the artist tries to get sponsorship from MTN, MTN says, no, you are the guy fighting with these people. If we do a collaboration with you, how, the, how do we know that in three weeks you will not go and do a song to this us? So we are trying to push an agenda at parliament, trying to get a, a bill passed. And politicians are saying, what? There are no schools in too much. Why should we spend 30 hours of parliamentarian's time talking about these rappers who are always insulting themselves on Twitter? So what happens is that we are so selfish that we look at our immediate trend, immediate gratification. 
that is one of the things so unity amongst us or when unity that is not existing inside this industry is the thing that gets the people who are supposed to do the right things for the industry to pretend they don't know they are supposed to do the right thing and then professionalism when your when when your talent is as solid as say farm eugene or pd there's no way that you will not blow because the talent is the talent of Kwame Eugene is where it is. It's what it means that he has rehearsed all his life to be able to become who he is now. And I remember when I was trying to come up, I was doing my national search. I used all my national service alawa to record bad demos. <laughs> all of it to record bad demos. But because of that demo, I did a performance in '96. Okreku heard my bad demo and drove to Kumasi to come and manage me. So you are not getting help. What it means is that you are not pushing enough. When you are in business, the first place you need to look for resources is yourself. Then your immediate family, and then your friends, and then your family members, and then your community, before your city and your country. Now there are so many opportunities for a young creative person to amass resources. When you have one million subscribers on YouTube, it is equal to one million dollars in advertising currency. How do you you, to set up a YouTube page is free. To set up a, a blog is free. To set up a Facebook page is free. To set up an Instagram page is free. Why don't you down and set up an Instagram page where every Friday you drop bars on your page? I tell you, in one year you have more than one million subscribers. That will immediately turn you into an influencer. And big businesses, based on your brand's direction, will pay you 5,000 Ghana CDs to post just one ad. And if you get two in a month, that is a thousand. How many CEOs in Ghana get paid 10,000 10, CDs a, a month? You know, so based on your resources, you will be able to curate a certain buzz and euphoria that can let people come and see you. And based on the number of eyeballs you have, you can monetize it. So basically, when God gives you the talent of acting, rapping, singing, speaking, it is a complete talent. If it is not making money for you, if it's not getting you to a place where, then your intelligence is working against you. So that apart from that one, is good management. So I've been working with, with everybody I work with. The, the, your, the smallest time or the, the shortest time period of uh, time that I work with, one of my people is just five years. So I've been working with my photographer, everybody I've worked with, I've worked with for 11 years. I've been working with Andy for all my life since I was six. I've been working with my wife all my life. I've, I've, everybody that I work with, we it's a close, small knit that we work together. And these people who are in management, they have made a promise to themselves that they will make sure that I survive. Because of that, I know that it's important. It's important for me to survive and not disgrace Abuakese. Abuakese has taught everything he is doing on life to, in life to follow me. So I know it's a responsibility for me to succeed for myself and Abuakese. Otherwise, people will laugh at him. You know, so management also plays a role. But the, I think that the, the most important thing is honesty. If you are honest about your craft, if you are honest about your relationship, if you are honest, and you do not like or play with people's emotions. You, the universe aligns for you to get what you want. When you come here, I was listening to Kwame. You know, Kwame is an amazing person. And he has a good heart. And it's very important to have a clean heart. So that anybody you deal with, you can always keep a good testimony. I've known Kwame not today. You know, we, 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 just that Kwame, Kwame denied me of, <coughs> of a collab, which today, Yogi Dogi boast about. It's true. Yes. It was messing up. Yes. Kofi brought me to the studio. Yes. Kwame brought Yogi Dogi. It's true. And Yogi, now we all came to feature on one song. Then Kwame wanted Chi. I think Zamalek wanted Chi, Chi Raga. It's and I said I couldn't do Chi. I want to do uh, Patwa. Then Zam was pushing for Chi. Then Kwame brought Yogi. So if Kwame had not brought Yogi, you would have done, I would have done my thing there. <laughs> so Yogi <laughs> took him, he also mastered his tree and he said, Chi, get me to say I don't like I, I can't do chi. Right. So that's how time we got on that song. Okay. And he shot to fame from there. We all had come side that night. Yes. Oh, if he brought me, he man. brought Kwame, he brought Yogi. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we go way back. So at then that, at that time, what, what was your name? No, no, no. <laughs> Kwame is my family. We we we, we, we discuss, we talk, we do stuff. In yeah, fact, we did a song. We see that we wrote together, yes. we co-wrote. Yes. So I know Kwame's you know, knowledge when it comes to songwriting. So when you're asking about songwriting issues, I say, Kwame is an intelligent person. He's a poetic writer. 
So you always find this his rhymes, his rhymes are always different. Then the last thing is the, with the with the with the, fa the fatherly uh, trait. You know, Andy, I believe that to be a good father, you need to have self-respect. It's very important. Mm -hmm. Self-respect and self-discipline. Because all the fathers whose kids are left uh, 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 walking on the street, wayward and all this unattended. Uh, unattended to are fathers who don't respect themselves. Because when people see them, they say, oh, that's Andy's son. Don't use me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Once I have a child with you, whether we are we are together or not, that child, I will take care of him until he's a full grown man. Wow. Because if I leave that child, it will still come back to me. When that child's life messes up or he's, 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 he's not well groomed, so that's my principle. So I, I really love the fact the fatherly trait because that's how we all we all operate. We are we are fathers, fathers with with, with love. Yes. So big respect, bro. May that thank you. Yeah. 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 But my boy's name pressure. I said mom pressure. Yeah. Penny be mom pressure. It's only fifty years. Debbie, my mom, my mom. So your new song. Yes. We are ending the interview. Your new song. Okay. So yeah, cool. Yes. What? Okay. <laughs> Why did you choose Kwame Uji? Because he's the artist of the year. <laughs> <laughs> no, was that the yes. reason? Oh, no, no, no. Because Kwame is my friend. I remember when I was his age, I had played, played Masanaba. It was the biggest song in the world at all places where all Ghanaians are from London to Russia. And, and if I had someone with my experience now, who was my friend, then I thought I could talk to you. That I could talk to about the nation, about our experience, about branding, about position. If I had someone like that who was my friend that I could talk to every day, I think I could have done more. So I see Kwame Eugene as a much, much younger, much more, much more intelligent, much more exciting and talented version of me. So I want him to succeed. So that's not why I did a song with him. But because of that, he's my friend. And because he's my friend, we talk, we vibe a lot. So last day I told Abu Akasa that I'm going to do a song. But I feel it in my heart, in the secret chambers of my heart, that Kwame Eugene will be, will be the one to produce it, to make it a hit. So I remember Ani asking me, is Kwame Eugene a producer? I said, yes, even a year ago he won the best. He's a producer, but he's just known for singing. So I think that Kwame Eugene will be the one. So I did something on the phone and I sent to Abu Akasa to send me. He said, ah, really, I will be a But it was only possible because we are friends. So he could tell me. So I said, I kept getting you to be black. Then he did this thing, like halfway through, with lyrics on it, and then brought it. Didn't you see it as a bit. Well, uh, uh, Kuala, uh, I don't know how about you, Kuala, you are much older, especially after producing the Made in Ghana album, a classic album. Uh, you know, AB, AB, when I played it to AB, AB said, I said, but you see, when people want to eat before, they don't they want to eat before. You can't even go and make rice water. People want to listen to drill. When people wanted to listen to, to crank, we gave them also. When they wanted, when people were listening to hip hop in Ghana, we gave them a you, you know, it's good you've mentioned that because I remember when you did also, when I told you let's go to Richie, you said no. So because, ah, uh, nah, man. I know the sort of person you are. Yes, because I was, I was processing it. But when I did the Made in Ghana album, I did a whole album live. With live musicians performing, choosing rhythms from each of ten, each of the ten regions. Mm. I knew that I had exhausted that space enough for me to do something else. You know, creativity is like water through a hole. When the one in front leaves, the ones from the back can come. But because I've done the Made in Ghana album, I was so proud of. I was willing to try new things, and then we tried this one. And I remember that the conversation we had before we wrote the song, or before we, I recorded my verse on the song, was that let us record the song. That sounds like what is happening. But make a lot of money out of it. And in 2019, 2020, we all know in Nigeria, we are afraid of COVID. Then we are afraid of lockdown. Then lockdown came with financial effects. Then the financial effects came with stress and anxiety and depression. We are all afraid. So in Nigeria, yeah. Then let us do a song that will remind people. So if you listen to this song, you see that it's the reverse of Woso. So in Woso, I speak of the problems, then the chorus is Woso. But this one, we speak of the of the solution, and then the the chorus is the problem, mm. and it's the same beat, just the beat here. Just this one is a little faster. Mm. The same beat, same signals, same everything. Mm. You know, so and we decided to record the song that we tell people. Say even though say yeah, you know, there's hope. You know, I mean, I, the God that mind, that's very fine. 
Yeah. Thank you. I'm so grateful for your time, man. Thank you very much for coming, man. I can see. You have known Andy since he was shot. Uh, from <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, keep it tuned in here on the Transfer 3.9 FM. It's been fun having our champion Kwame in the studio. Let's end it all. And many thanks for your messages. <laughs> Ah, let's dance.